The King of Fighter series had a lot of villains. Some are highly regarded, others were kind of disappointing, and there are those who nobody wants to remember. But it's safe to say that the most iconic bad guy among them was the original villain of the series. Rugal Bernstein, the cheapest bastard ever, as his own creators call him. What made Rugal so memorable wasn't just his badass design, his awesome themes, his maniacal laugh, or his stupidly unfair moves. He had a persona. Sure, he was mostly a one-dimensional evil character, but he also had a very rich backstory, despite being present in only two canonical games. Of course, he's also been in many other iterations and crossover titles, and the fight against him is always the most dreaded moment in these games. But the sweet feeling of accomplishment when you finally beat him after dozens of tries makes it more than worth it. As always, if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you can be notified with every new video posted. Rugal's past is shrouded in mystery. We know nothing about his age, birthplace or family, except that he had a younger brother who he didn't see in a very long time. The closest thing that he might call as family was Rodem, his pet Black Panther. Rugal gained his nefarious notoriety when he became the leader of an international arm and drug dealing cartel, but he was far from the stereotype of the crime boss who's all brain and no muscles. He was feared in the fighting world as one of the strongest men alive. Mastering all known fighting disciplines, he was an unstoppable behemoth during a fight. He loved crushing his opponents and enjoyed the sight of despair in their eyes, as he turned them into statues which he added to his morbid collection of previous fallen champions. Rugal's might was not just physical and financial, it also reached the political sphere. His influence over the trade of arms and weapons meant that he could change the outcome of many wars, and for that, the world governments feared him, but unfortunately, there was nothing they could do about it. Rugal's main headquarter was an aircraft carrier called Black Noah, and being always on the move meant that he was basically untouchable. However, that didn't mean he was invincible either. Rugal was a power-hungry maniac, always looking for new means to gain more strength. At the age of 25, he heard about Orochi and the potential might he could gain from this mythical being. He began his pursuit for its source of energy, but his search led him face to face against the leader of the Hakishu, Genitz. Underestimating the young missionary who was 18 at that time, Rugal rushed to destroy him with his overwhelming strength, only to be countered with a single blow that took out one of his eyes and instantly end the fight. The funny thing was, they were both surprised by the outcome of the combat. Rugal couldn't believe how he was easily beaten, and Genis was impressed that Rugal was still breathing after his deadly attack. He decided to give Rugal a small amount of Orochi's powers. Of course, by no means that act was out of pure kindness. Genis saw Rugal as a potential host for Orochi and wanted to see if the crime lord could control such power, and to some extent, he could. After tasting the first defeat in his life and changing his lost eye with a cybernetic one, Rugal returned to his usual wicked life, more brutal and ruthless than ever. The only person he knew was stronger than him was Genitz, and thankfully, that man had no interest in his business and represented no threat to his criminal empire. Eight years before KOF 94, Rugal attacked a top secret base in Brazil just for the sake of demonstrating his power. He single handedly killed 50 soldiers who gathered to celebrate the promotion of their fellow comrade Haydn. After learning that the ceremony was held for his exceptional talent in combat and strategy, Rugal challenged Haider in a fight, but was quickly disappointed by how weak the soldier was compared to him. He easily defeated Haider and irreversibly damaged one of his eyes. Rugal considered that Haydn was not worth adding to his collection and felt that he wasted time with him. So, to blow off some steam, he killed his wife and daughter who were present in the base for the ceremony. Then he went back to his HQ, leaving only one survivor with an unspeakable grudge and sorrow in his heart. 
with an arrogance that knew no limits, and the feeling that no one can stand against him, Rugal decided to organize his own version of the King of Fighters tournament. His reasons were to entertain himself and maybe add some new statues to his collection. He hired two secretaries, Mature and Vice, to help him with the organizing process. What he didn't knew, the two women were spies sent by Guinness to keep a close eye on him, but for some reason, likely because of his gratuitous cruelty that matched their vicious nature, they became genuinely fond of him. During the invitation phase, the head of the Kusanagi family, Saishu, came alone to Black Noah and challenged Rogal in a fight with the hope to stop his evil deeds for good. But despite how strong he was, his level was far below Rogal's and was easily beaten. Rogal didn't even see the need to kill him and just let him to die slowly on his ship. Understand the concept of love! As the journey came to an end, Rugal was eager to receive the winning team in his aircraft carrier. He wasted no time confessing his true intentions behind organizing the tournament. Team Japan was horrified when they saw the statues and learned that they were previous fighting champions. Plus, they also found Saishu lying on the ground and severely injured. Kyo and his friends were furious and prepared for combat, which is exactly what Rugal wanted. They managed to defeat him in the first round, but they knew something was not right. Their victory was easy, too easy. They didn't have to wait long before learning that Rogal was just testing their strength, and now he was going to fight more seriously and use all his power. Needless to say, the difference in level between the crime boss and Team Japan was enormous. They learned the hard way that Rugal did not only have fearsome moves capable to obliterate any kind of opponents, he was also able to mimic others' techniques. But against all odds, Team Japan fought very well and succeeded in vanquishing their monstrous enemy, but not without a lot of effort and maybe a tad of luck as well. Witnessing all that determination made Rugal realize how wrong he was. He accepted his defeat and thanked the trio for helping him see that the power of friendship is stronger than all other types of power. And since that day, they all became best pals and Rugal lived happily ever after like hell he did. He triggered the self-destruct mechanism the moment the match ended in an attempt to drag his opponents with him to the bottom of the sea and hide his shameful defeat. But his attempt backfired as he was the only one caught in the explosion, while Team Japan miraculously escaped the trap. Unfortunately for them, it appeared that Rugal used his last car, the Orochi power, to survive the explosion as well. But he lost an arm though, which he replaced with a cybernetic one. He also saved Saishu, who he intended to use in his future revenge against Kyo and his friends. Thanks to Vice's help, he brainwashed the Kusanagi Patriarch and made him his obedient bodyguard. Without wasting time, he immediately started the preparations for the organizing of the next KOF. He sent invites with the same RC on them in hopes to lure Team Japan and sure thing, his plan worked. Once they made it to the finals, Kyo and his friends were dragged by sleeping guys and kidnapped. They found themselves in an abandoned missile site where Rugal was waiting for them. He called his special bodyguard and watched with joy Kyo's reaction after seeing his father working for him. The crime boss then ordered Saishu to attack them. After a very challenging fight, they somehow managed to neutralize the brainwashed old man. Adamant to get his revenge no matter what, Rugal unleashed his Orochi powers and transformed into his Omega Rugal form, characterized by a dark skin, white hair, and an overall monstrous look. The fight against him was even tougher than their last one. Add to that, the Tri were already exhausted from the previous fight against Saishu. Nonetheless, they once again succeeded in defeating their no longer human opponent. The crime lord, being the sore loser that he is, refused to admit defeat as expected. He tried to channel more of the Orochi power within him, but because he was not from a Hakisho lineage, his body couldn't support it. And so, the potential mean of his victory was the very reason of his demise. Rugal's body exploded into infinite molecules as the three caught a glimpse of the evil Orochi aura for a brief instant before it disappeared. 
That was the end of Rogal. However, the Bernstein story was far from over. While he was building his criminal empire, it seems that Rogal did not forget to assure his own offspring. Unbeknownst to most people, he had two children, Adelheid and Rose. When their father died, they inherited his tremendous fortune and used it to build an airship named Skynoa, where they lived secluded from the rest of the world. The wealth was not the only thing they inherited from Rogal. They took after their father in many other things. Adele was also quite strong. He mastered many fighting disciplines at a very young age. And just like his father, he loved the thrill of combat and adored challenging strong opponents. However, he had much better sportsmanship and had no problem admitting defeat when he loses. He also had no evil intentions whatsoever. Once he took over Rogal's empire, he seized all criminal activities and deployed its capabilities for harmless businesses. His sister Rose was a smart and refined young woman. Although she had her father's arrogance and short temper, she was more of a spoiled brat than a pure evil mastermind. And just like Rugal, she also had a cute little pet Black Panther. Rose was very good at fencing, though she was never seen fighting. Most of the time, she preferred playing the piano, her favorite hobby, and leaving all fighting to her brother. And because she treasured him so much, she even organized K-Wave 2003, just so he could measure himself against the best of the best. And the best of that tournament were the members of the Ikari Warriors team who made it to the finals for the first time in K-Wave's history. They were invited aboard Skynoa and welcomed by Rose who then introduced her brother as their final challenge. The combat started and Adele proved to be a worthy successor of Rogal Bernstein. He fought with all his strength while his sister played the piano as her own way of cheering for him. But despite their efforts, Adelheid alone was no match against the three soldiers and lost the combat. Refusing to accept defeat, Rose swore that the Ikari warriors were not going to leave the airship alive. But she was immediately stopped by her reasonable brother, who asked her to let them go, arguing that they had won fair and square. When the next competition was announced, Adelheid joined it as a single entry, confident that he can beat entire teams all by himself. He was accompanied by Rose, who made sure to encourage and cheer for her brother before each combat. Unfortunately for the two siblings, Botan, a member of those from the past, noticed Rose during the tournament and saw her as a potential asset for their villainous agenda. Just like she did with Shizuru before, Botan decided to subjugate the young girl to her mind control technique and preparations for the next step in their plan. Without consulting her brother, Rose, under the control of Botan, organized K-Wave 13. The objective was to awake Orochi and transfer its power to their leader, Saiki. Adelheid was very suspicious about his sister's behavior. Obviously, he cared a lot about her, and her well-being was what mattered the most to him. He was ready to ally and cooperate with anyone as long as it could save Rose. And for that purpose, he contacted his father's victim and greatest enemy, Aydern. They agreed to share their knowledge about those from the past with each other and collaborated using their resources to limit the moves of the malevolent clan. When Psyche was erased from existence at the end of the tourney, Rose was freed at last. She couldn't remember being manipulated, but that didn't matter anymore for Adelheid, who was more than happy that his sister was back to her normal self. Yet their carefree life seemed threatened more than any time before, when Verts was destroyed at the end of k 14 and the shadow of their evil dad started looming over them again. Rugal is the embodiment of cruelty and evil. He would never hesitate to crush anyone who dare stand in his way, literally. For that purpose, he mastered all known fighting styles. Rugal can gather energy from Earth itself and utilize it in different ways, like throwing projectiles of different sizes and forms, which is why he can easily mimic Geese's Repuken and Krauser's Kaiser Wave. 
Much like many other characters, he can create a mirror-like shape capable of damaging and reflecting projectiles. He probably stole this technique from Athena and added his personal touch by changing its pink color. While it's true that Rugal is notorious of copying other fighters' moves, that doesn't mean he can't come up with his own deadly techniques. For instance, he has the strength and the ability to drag and slam people regardless of their sizes against the stage's wall, even when clearly there is no wall, and that is impressive. By far, his deadliest, cheapest, most dreaded technique is the infamous genocide cutter. Rugal can create a slashing aura with his feet capable of cutting his enemies, and no, he is not wearing special sharp shoes as some may think. This move is a nightmare for many, regardless of what game we're talking, and it just keeps getting worse and worse with each passing installment. But I think we can all agree that its version in 94 was totally broken and unfair. The developer said that he was supposed to be even cheaper than that. Rugal was originally thought to be capable of copying any move during the gameplay, kinda like Chang Tsung or Yomeji, but the idea was crap due to technical reasons. Adelheid inherited all his father's moves. Not only that, he can execute them in a much faster way and easily chain them together. However, his version of the said moves lacks strength. He seems he has to use a lot of energy to put them out, and that's why his supers like the genocide cutter were just his father's regular special moves. On the other hand, he has the advantage of being much younger, so he has enough time to catch up with his old man. Adelheid is also far less evil and treats his opponents with respect. Unlike Hurugal who has absolutely no consideration for human life and kills for the heck of it, as seen with Haydn's family, he can be incredibly salty upon losing, even in non-canonical entries. Speaking of which, we can't forget the time when he literally wiped the floor with Akuma in Capcom vs SNK2. In that game, Rugal's god complex reached an unprecedented level. After he absorbed Akuma's power, he transformed into the definition of unfairness, also known as Ultimate Rugal. What can I say about this form? Well, in addition of all his previous cheap moves, he acquired some of Akuma's techniques, including his Raging Demon. The damage his attacks deal is beyond ridiculous, because of course, and his lost eye got regenerated. Now both his eyes are glowing red. Congrats! If that was a KOF game, then this version of Rugal would definitely have won my top 10 hardest bosses video. Needless to say, none of this is canon, but I just cannot not mention it. I would love to see father and son in the same game, and curious to know how they will interact with each other. Since they were never close to begin with, it is more likely that Adelheid would side with the good guys against Rugal, but if he ever decided to remain loyal to his own blood, then this Bernstein alliance would be one of the deadliest threats our heroes ever knew. Special thanks to my patrons for their generous support. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and why not consider subscribing to the channel. Stay safe, and thanks for watching.